And how the future of the black man into the next millennium depends on the education centered around the African. It's time to make a change. Black people gotta get up. Time to make a change. Black people gotta step up. You really gotta overstand. You gotta educate yourself as an African. You really gotta wake back me up on this. Goldsmiths College was a white island. An almost exclusive, well, exclusively white island in a changing post-colonial sea. One of the things that's been amazing about drawing this map, reggae map of New Cross, was how much was going on literally outside, across the street, sometimes next door, from where the official curriculum was. And I was lucky enough during that time to cross that, cross the street, to go next door, to get drawn into a world that was hosted by young black people and I probably got to learn more in those spaces about the politics of race and racism, the balance between affiliation and appropriation in those spaces than I learned anywhere else. But the, we're going to start by literally going across the street and uh, to 51 Lewisham Way, where there were sound system sessions and dances, where my friend and co-conspirator used to perform. Les. Yeah. So 51 Lewisham Way. Where Victor was talking about, we used to have spaces like for shubbins or blues dances. 51 Lewisham Way, every Saturday, you would get one of the leading sound systems, including what was then called a Ute sound system. Saxon, who's with Shaka, are the most famous sounds from this yep. side of London. But the name 51 Storm was captured from a storm that destroyed or devastated Jamaica in 1951. So even that diasporic link is there just in the naming of that venue. Yeah. So it's almost like you're always having that rememory of with this tragedy in Jamaica, we created something aesthetically pleasing and beautiful to us. This is it. 51 Lewisham Way, mostly downstairs. Okay, so it was mostly in the basement. Yeah. So obviously we would have to hump our speaker boxes, etc., etc. I don't know if you lot are familiar with sound system speaker boxes, not like discos. It's not like nowadays when they got wheels and stuff like that. We didn't have wheels, you had to hump them. And they were heavy, okay? So you have to kind of come and have a look. And this, um, this story is told in Les's book, What the DJ Said, which was from your PhD thesis. Yeah. Which is this, this one. Is um, which you can buy over there. It's got a beautiful description of this and many other of the, of yeah. the sort of so informal what? spaces. Yeah. <laughs> so actually described the first time I ever spoke on sound system, which is also in this, a book of my lyricism, more or less from that time. Yeah. But it worked like this, I'll tell you very quickly. Yeah. Myself and my brother and a brethren were out raving. I'd been writing lyrics for about three or four years. Never had the bottle to take up the mic. So we came here December the 31st to January the 1st, 1981 to 82. My under tool drink, tool. <laughs> and my brethren and my brother said to me, I'll go and take the mic, you can do as well as these guys. This was the Saxon DJs. So it was Papa Levi, Dirty Desi, a guy called Mello. Um, I think Maxi Priest might have been there yeah. as a singer then. And there's a brother called Rankin Cole who's passed the other yeah. day, peace be upon him. Anyway, I went and took up the mic, I dropped a lyric. And I remember one of the first I chatted went something like, um, See them in the morning, them I preach you of offense. Watch them in the night, them I smoke eye shents. Them I parasite and hypocrites. So judge, I go fling them in the bottomless pit. Me now go to church and go bow to no priest. Cause priests make the money out of lies and deceit. Worse than the muggers who are ruined Britain Street. So that was one of the first lyrics I ever yeah, tried. Yeah, come on. In there. Okay. Yeah. Now something you need to notice, you know. So we just crossed the road. The sociology department was at number 47. That's where Linton Kwesi Johnson had his tutorials. The anthropology department is over there in the number 30s. You know, and the truth is, this isn't very, it's not pretty to say it, but it's absolutely the truth, completely unconnected with what yeah. was going on at 51 Lewisham Way. Yeah. It, was, it, it was completely unconnected. Yeah. So in a way, I want to show you this. He doesn't know this. Hold, my, hold the book, Liz. Take the book. Hold the book. Take the book. Okay. okay. So this is a white label that Les gave me after he came here to an open day. Oh, wow. Of, a, of, an, of a record called Recognition. Yeah. You're not going to do that one. Anyway. Maybe. Later. Later. Okay, so it says, to Dr. Les back. 
didn't they? Didn't deserve that then. <laughs> um, from W. Henry, we met on open day. Wow. It's a long road from there wow. to here. Recognition is what they find the black musician. Recognition, especially in England. Recognition when you rap them while you rap American. If I rap them, sound like Bujo Aki and Pultan. Sing like a Sanchez DJ, like Shabba. Tear out your throat back. Are you a sound like Mega? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Do you remember Omolara showed those images of style from the 70s from John Gotto? These ones, do you remember? Yeah. Okay, these John Gotto portraits were taken inside this youth club. This youth club was a really cool, a key place. Again, Victor mentioned it. It was a kind of black alternative public sphere for young people. Yeah. Sounds played there. I saw loads of dances there, actually. Yeah. But um, what was interesting about I just wanted to bring you here for two reasons, really. There's a connection to Lover's Rock. But also, you know, the youth clubs were so important. And the sad thing about doing these walks is it makes us confront what's happened since. So from live alternative public spaces to ruins, to ruins. Before you start, okay. the guy over there yeah. in the red hat yeah. is Loosh, who gave me my name, Leslie Lyric. Oh, no way. Wow. It's him, yeah. That's hilarious. Well, you He's tell that story. Young man over there in the red hat. We're not going to get to Childer Street today. We're not going to make it there, no. Young man over there in the red hat, when you go on the reggae map, there's a club called Childers Street. Yeah. In 1982. So I remember I said I started on the cusp of 1982. Within about, I would say by about May 1982. Because I used to just rub everybody out with lyrics. I'm not saying I'm the most stylish, but lyrically, I think the only person who could test me is Maccabee. Wait, I said. <laughs> <laughs> say that louder. Right, so I think lyrically the only person who could test me is Maccabee <laughs> and in Jamaica Papa Sign. I would take on all the rest of them. Yeah. We're not going to ask you to do that but today though, Les. The guy over there, when we had a crash dance with Saxon sound system, this was our little sound called Get A Tone sound system, where the crash with Saxon, it must have been around maybe, yeah, late 82, something like that, and after I finished demolishing them with lyrics, and it, ironically, Saxon sound system comes from that house just up there. Yeah. That's where Muslid used to yeah. live. So Saxon sound there, comes brother. from there. So anyway, we had this kind of crash thing. Battered them with lyrics. And Loosh over there and another guy called Jackson, a one called Basho who's passed away. Peace be upon him. They came up, took the mic on them, said, there's the lyrics who I call you, dog. I have more lyrics than all of the boy of them. And that's how I got my name. There's the so lyrics. It's almost like an African... Right, the passage, my naming ceremony yeah. took place then. So I never gave myself the name, they gave me the name. Okay, just quickly, because it's come up, we've talked a lot about Lovers Rock today. Um, Dennis Bovell, the bass player, producer, songwriter, who was in Matumbi, very much involved with the shaping of that genre with Janet Kay, who was there, is in the audience today. Janet here? No. Dennis told me about Eve Studios. He said, oh, it's in Broccoli Rise. It's very, no, it's, it's Lover's Rock Studios. It's in Broccoli Rise, Broccoli Rise. And I would say to Dennis, Dennis, you sure it's in Broccoli Rise? He said, yeah. Dennis didn't grow up in South London, no. across the river. He said, yeah, no, Broccoli Rise, Broccoli Rise. And then he came here one day and I said, OK, take me to where Eve Studios was. We walked to where we are. Eve Studios, Upper Broccoli Road this is, yeah. not Broccoli Rise, was in the basement over there in that shop at number 13. And the person who set that studio up, and um, John Kapai was in that band, who was a fantastic guitar player, also in Matumbi. Um, uh, the person who set that up was a man called Dennis Harris. And I yeah. think he had the first supermarket in Broccoli. So he was like an yeah, entrepreneur. I think so. yeah, Do you think I that's think right? So, yeah. I think that's yeah, right. I think you're right. Anyway, but he was a music lover. Mm. And he wanted to get into producing music. Yeah. And so the studio's still down there. I've going to see the shopkeeper a lot, actually. There's Dennis, there's the reel to reel tapes. And one of the tunes that was made was by a, a, a trio of female singers called Brown Sugar. I'm in love with the dreadlocks. <laughs> Brown Sugar included Karen Wheeler. Yeah. 15, I think she was. Yeah. On this tune. On the reggae map, you can hear this properly. So, what we're going to do now, we're going to back down and back the way we came, past the college, going down towards Clifton Rock. At 29. Um, is where uh, Joe Gibbs, the famous Jamaican producer and songwriter, had a record shop. Oh. Our last stop, we're just going to walk down to the top of Clifton Rise and tell you a few things from there, then we're going to head back. He was always a bit of a ducker and diver, I thought. Um, a little bit, wasn't he? 
Yeah, yeah. And, and he kind of played like it. And he played like it. He played like it. All right. We haven't got time to go there, uh, but in the early um, part of 1981, there was a terrible tragedy. Um, 14 young people ended up losing their lives in the New Cross. What came to be known the New Cross fire, uh, 439. Um, New Cross Road down there. Just on the corner, if you turn around there and look at the red, gold and green frontage, yeah. that was Jar Shucker's shop, culture shop, um, throughout the 1980s where Shucker sold records. His sound system was at a little sort of daytime headquarters there. A couple things about this last stop. Clifton Rise is a historic place in all kinds of ways. The Battle of Lewisham, that some of you know. But the film Babylon um, that was mentioned before, yeah that Victor was in, was one of the characters, the opening sequence was filmed just there on that street. So Brinsley um, runs up that street in the opening scene. I have to quickly mention on Deptford High Street is probably the most famous venue next to Moonshot, which we'll talk about yeah. in a second. And it was called the Crip, the St. Crip. Paul's Crip on Deptford High Street. Underneath. Yeah, underground. Yeah, you had probably, I would say, every major sound system in the UK, yeah. played in Crip. Not only that, we also had whoever was the number one Jamaican artist at the time would be in the Crip. Yes, exactly. Tell us the story about Moonshot as a place to go. You, because you carry boxes for Shaka there, didn't you? Yeah. And then there was a pub on the corner called the Dew Drop Inn that is now gentrified flats, literally yeah. 100 metres away. Just yeah. tell us about that quickly. Right, so very quickly, yeah. Here, no teeth, see that? I ain't got no shame to say, it's one of me medals, yeah? Was at Moonshot one night, stringing down Shaka sound. So we, I would say, it was probably a Friday, about half 11, I'm walking up the road with, ironically, tiny sister. Wow. And a friend of mine. And all I heard is, you fucking black bastard. And this guy hit me straight in the face with a bit of wood, bashed two of my teeth. One went down my throat, I think I spat the other one out. The point that I'm making is, you had Moonshot, which was our space, and it was a church hall, and within, say from here to that tree, was the most rife racist pub yeah. in this part of Lewis. Oh, literally, that's from one end of the street to the other to end the of other. the street. We didn't feel like we were inferior to anybody, so mm. we did walk with that pride, you know, that uprightness. It, mm. was, it was crucial to our development. Yeah, so the joy and that yeah. power and the violence. Yeah, so they were all kind of... Yeah. Interlinked. But um, how long we got? We, we, we're, we're out of time. time. But we're out of time. I was. Oh, wait. Don't wait. <laughs> <laughs> look away, look away. What's he doing? We really are out of time for the camera. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Of course, that's going to make us all look. We did it. We didn't look. Yes, David was there, so David is my witness. Remember Rotter Tom when I was on the thing with Lone Ranger yeah. and Carton Livingston. Lone Ranger, one of my favourite DJs ever. We were having a conversation about lyrical exchanges across the Black Atlantic, let's say. Remember I said I'd been writing lyrics for about three or four years before I had the bottle to talk? Lone Ranger used to do a lyric about Remingtons and a Remington there they go. is a gun. So in Jamaica it was a type right. of gun. I learned about all the different forms of munitions from Jamaican yard tanks. Yeah. Because they would tell you the description of the gun, how many shots, shots it could fire. So Ali G the pirate, when he was trying to patent Buyaka Shaka, like he mm. created it, Buyaka Buyaka was the sound of a gun. Mm. Okay. Now, when I heard Lone Ranger's lyric about Remington, I thought to myself, I don't know anything about guns. So I wrote a lyric. Remington Razor. Yeah, hello. Uh, Remington Razor. What is significant about this, and I got this from Les, because I remember... I went to one of Les's MA lectures when I was an undergraduate and he brought in a, the, the thing with the, the, with the horn. Yeah, the, the gramophone record. What's it called? Gramophone record. The gramophone record with the thing, with the horn on it, like his master's voice job. So I got using props from him, but a bit of lyric went, man tell me about Remington, we put man in a grave, the Remington me know my father use it for shave. At school the teachers taught me things like how to use a lathe. Would I ask him any question about when man live in a cave? My ox and boat when black man dung in a slave, them blush turn red, them answer used to scare. I'll give you an example of the answer they gave. Blood shall make you get out of the class until you learn to behave. So that was part of that lyric, just inspired by that. Yeah. So, Thank you, everyone.
We need to go. We need to go back. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Go. It's actually amazing. I live like a few miles from here. I'm literally in my neighborhood. And I've never thought there is all of this like black history and all of this music going around. And I'm a jazz singer. I should have known, but this is like amazing to discover. I really didn't know the exact building where that disastrous fire was in the 70s. So that was interesting and where a lot of the sound system started.